It's a while since I've taken a look at something super trashy, so I thought, okay, this is a SignalX USB in car charger, and it's interesting that it says MB3 players, phones, tablets, and sat navs. Now, it also has a label on it that says 5 volts at 500 milliamps. That's not a lot of current by modern standards, so it's only really suitable for sort of low current devices, like maybe recharging flashlights and things that would probably draw a maximum of 500 milliamps. But I really want to see. Have they evolved? Because these things used to have, uh, they used to have a Motorola chip in them. So, usually this end unscrews. It's not unscrewing. Is it, might just be jammed on. Hold on, let me grab something to, let me grab something to pull that off with. Is it going to unscrew or is it going to just pop off? Ooh, maybe the spudger will, will prize this off. It's all gone horribly wrong already. That's okay. These things happen. Uh, and the spudger is not visible. I shall improvise with this pair of rugged scissors that were sent as a gift to me. Engineer scissors. Oh yeah, I actually got a serrated bit. Let's uh, hook it under there. That has popped off. It wasn't screwed on, it was just pressed on. These are interesting. I've not really given these a good test. I, I would thank the person who sent them. I should have written his name on them, shouldn't I? I've not written his name on them. I shall find that out for future. So this thing is the usual. Oh, it's, it's got a fuse. It's got a very, very tiny fuse. And the front may come off as well. Is that a screw under there? Oh, there is a screw under there. I wasn't expecting a screw. I thought that was either going to be glued on or just wedged on, as these things sometimes are. It isn't exactly what you call a top-of-the-range model. So there's a screw. Is that going to come off now, or is it glued? It's glued, I think, because it's not coming off. Uh, Niff. This is a bad idea. Where is my spudger? Oh, there's my spudger. It was hiding. Let's see if we can spudge this off. It is not. I think it's glued on tightly or jammed on tightly. It's jammed on tightly. Okay. What is it going to reveal? Is it going to have springy bits? Let's get down close in this. Well, I'll, obviously I'll be taking a picture and we can reverse engineer it properly. Nothing on the back. I don't even see a resistor for the LED. Just that little tiny 8-pin chip. Inductor, two capacitors and a diode. Okay. One moment, please. I shall take a picture of this, reverse engineer it, and we can then explore it completely. Pictures have been taken. The circuitry has been reverse engineered. There's not a lot to it. It's a very vague chip. And I've put it under test. I've tested it at 500 milliamps. I shall zoom down this so we can actually see this here. It's currently at 500 milliamps. This is a... What is that? Uh, what brand is that? Just I'll, I'll turn the power off and again I'll announce which brand it is because I always get asked. It is Ruideng. It's a Ruideng USB meter. And this is a generic eBay load, uh, digital, well, well, electronic load, variable load. It's currently at 500 milliamps. At 500 milliamps, the, well, I'll, I'll cover the what, how hot it got later on. But as you turn the current up, 600 milliamps, still holding 5 volts. 700 milliamps, starting to drop, dropping down 5.4, 5.3. The little red LED cuts out, and as you increase the load further, the LED actually goes dimmer. But that cuts out at, let's just double check that, about 700 milliamps or so. I'm just going to try that again. Bear with me one moment. I could use the fine control to do this. So that's 600 milliamps, 650 700 milliamps, and then it cuts out. So let's say 700 milliamps. Okay. Under a 500 milliamp load, I'll just put these out the way. Under a 500 milliamp load, uh, the unit gets fairly hot. The chip itself 
goes to about, well, it was 75 degrees Celsius when I took this picture. It then went up to approximately 80 degrees Celsius. The inductor was at 50 degrees Celsius and the little diode here, which, I mean, that's all there is on the board, really, other than the capacitors. It got up to 42 degrees Celsius. That was it. Uh, so really, I wouldn't recommend using it beyond the 500 milliamp rating, which makes it useless for most things. It's just, what do you expect, expect for a dollar or a pound, I guess, ultimately? Let's bring in the pitches. Okay, we'll take a look at the top first. The top of the circuit board has the LC51 chip. It has an inductor. It has two capacitors, both equal value, 47 microfarad, 16 volt, and it has a shot key diode and the LED. That is it. Even the LED doesn't have a resistor because it's actually got its own little pin on this chip. And then there is, of course, the USB output connector. Underneath this, and flipped around for your convenience, is the track layout showing how the there are three pins common. Now, I did find reference to an LC51 chip on Beidou. They wouldn't let me download the data sheet and all I could do was steal a rough picture of it. But it shows that uh, this connection is no connection, in no internal connection to the chip. But I think they've actually just gone through that just to ease the track layout. But we have the VCC. This connection now up here is apparently the uh, the collector of the transistor inside. And this connection is the emitter of a transistor. And it's used to switch power to the inductor. We have the inductor, the short key diode. We have a sense pin to sense the voltage to determine when it's to actually run. And then the output is going to the USB port. The USB has both the data pins bridged to suggest a limit of, say, one amp, 500 milliamp, one amp. I would always thought that was one amp, but then it just seems to vary between systems. In this instance, if you plug in something beefy, it's not gonna it's not gonna charge very well on this. The construction is interesting because the well I could show you that another picture. The negative connection here, the springy bits that stick out the side and hold the plug in are actually going up and they're actually folding around the USB connector. It's quite a stout assembly. It's not that bad, actually, that way. It's a shame the rest of it is not up to our expectations, but it's almost like an out-of-date component. Going back to the days when 500 milliamps would have been perfectly acceptable, but it is not now. It may have been acceptable in the 80s. It wouldn't even have been acceptable then. Mainly because USB didn't exist then, but not to worry. So here's the 12 volt input. It has a smoothing capacitor across it, just for general smoothing and stability. It has the chip, and the, it's showing the three connections into it here. One is going to the transistor collector, and the other is actually powering it, and the other is apparently not connected to anything. It has the zero volt connection for powering the circuitry. It has the feedback and the LED output to drive that LED. I'm wondering if when it overheats and cuts out, because it has that facility if it turns the LED off to indicate short circuit and uh, other conditions, because it does go out uh, when you overload it. The output switches this inductor. It does so as a series of pulses when it needs to actually boost this output capacitor up. And this is the one the 5 volts is across, and it is just topped up and kept to 5 volts. As soon as it reaches 5 volts, it centres that in the feedback and it turns it off. This chip is apparently capable of running up to about 40 volts. I don't think I'd push it that far. Um, and theoretically, this feedback, if you wanted, say, 10 volts instead, you could theoretically use, say, two 10K resistors as a divider to get half the voltage and then feed it, but it would get the half the voltage to the feedback and it would boost it up higher. But by default, it's optimised for 5 volts. When it's actually operating, this transistor turns on and this end goes positive and this end goes negative and the inductor in creating that magnetic field limits the current flowing through it. It all happens at very high speed, so it tops this capacitor up. When this then turns off, this end goes negative and this end goes positive, and then it uses this freewheeling diode to actually, as the magnetic field collapses in that, it dumps what was in the what it's capable of doing into the capacitor. So it's active both in being powered on and then powered off. It's using this quite efficiently. And that is fundamentally it. Um, so during the charging of that, say, the current is flowing sort of through like that and down to the capacitor. But when that turns off, it actually flows in this route instead in the sort of closed loop. Very, very simple. And the data pins are just shunted together. There's not much to it. It is a chip seemingly optimised almost for this task. 
Uh, and maybe it is because the earlier units used to use a, a Motorola, an MC chip. I think it was a Motorola chip. And it used to be really commonly used. But I guess ultimately this, the demand for uh, these chargers is so high that they just optimised it for this. But there we go. Now I've seen that, I'm going to have to go and get a posher one. I'm going to have to get a modern, maybe a two-amp one if I can find one, and take it apart and see how much it's changed inside, whether it's just basically they've changed the chip. But that's it. Not a lot to it, but worth taking apart.